presentation by Sheldon Starr. And then I'm gonna be um, monitoring the chats as well too. So um, first of all, good evening. I'm kind of getting, if I cough in, while I'm asking questions and things, um, I'm getting over the flu. So, and I'm middle age now, so it's taken me a little longer. But um, like I said, my name is Tally Monto. I'm the moderator coordinator for uh, Racing Magpies Winter Camp Series. So on behalf of the whole team, um, we wanna welcome you guys for this presentation on the art of self-care and mental wellness with Sheldon Starr. Um, so Racing Mag, a little bit about Racing Magpie, they're a Lakota-centric arts and culture organization founded in 2015 in Rapid City, South Dakota to the center of Lakota practice of being a good relative in everything that one does. So midakyapi, odakuye, you know, always being a good relative. Um, their work is focused on elevating and amplifying ongoing work of our community-based artists, culture bearers, storytellers, anything that has to do with culture. Um, as part of being a good relative, um, this program winter camp will reimagine the, the Lakota winter camp model of problem solving, community building, um, kind of dive deeper into the cultural roots about the way Lakota people do things, um, how we evolve, especially in this new um, technolo technological era. And art plays a part in that too, because Sheldon is a graphic artist. That's where he got his degree in. Um, Lakota people always, we all know we do things, we interact, where our culture is always immersed in everything that we do. Um, and while the events are open to the public, they will always always be centered around Lakota community members. Um, I like to say Ocheti Shakoi because I am Dakota and Nakota, and my children are have Lakota too, so they are true Ocheti Shakoi. So a lot of us are mixed like that too. Um, so as plants and trees focus their energy on building strength and growing from roots during the winter, our community will join to strengthen and grow together through the sharing and learning forums that um, are presented in the winter camp series. Also, um, if you guys want to support Racing Magpie, you can contribute to their work as well. You can either make a donation of Racing Magpie through their website or mailing in or dropping off a donation. Um, they're located here in Rapid City and also support native artists, makers, create creators, creatives by searching them out, buying their art, always by indigenous. I tell people that always by indigenous made by straight from the artist or directly from the artist if you can. So a little bit of housekeeping things um, for questions, either raise your hand and use the chat down below. I'll be monitoring those and then we'll have like a question. We'll answer the questions um, about the last 10 minutes of the presentation. Um, we encourage you to keep your cameras on and stay fully engaged, but we do know sometimes you don't wanna keep your camera on, you know, you're multitasking, things like that. So that's okay too. Um, so like I said, feel free to privately chat in the, the chat. I'm monitoring that as well. So let me introduce Sheldon Starr. I worked with him before when I was at Rapid City Arts Council, but. He's most creative in abstract painting and graphic design. Um, he's still kind of in the early stages of exploring other fine arts mediums. Um, he still strives for expertise in all fine arts. All artists are perfectionists in their own way. So Sheldon graduated from Oglala Lakota College with a degree in graphic arts in 2020. Um, he continues to utilize his graphic design experience in freelance commission-based fields, creating custom graphics, logos, and text for clients. Um, if you ever come to Artist Fair here in Rapid City, go see his work. He does really good stuff. Sheldon shows his creative freedom through paintings based on geometric subjects, paying homage to traditional Lakota geometric designs and the aesthetics of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. He also produces creative pieces that are engulfed in, if you look at his work, I think he has some of his work back there, they're really vibrant through painting and digital artworks. He's an enrolled member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. He's a wild Oglala. <laughs> Don't let the calmness fool you. He's a wild <laughs> Oglala. And then um, he grew up here in Rapid City and Kyle area, right, Sheldon? Uh, in Oglala. Oh, in Oglala. 
Little tidbit about Sheldon that he didn't put on his um, bio that I would like to to kind of say is he was the first um, Native artist that had a show, a solo exhibit at the Bruce Lee Cultural Cafe over at the Dolphine Arts. So yay, Sheldon, that was a good show too. All right, Sheldon, so we're going to kick it off to you. Like I said, this presentation is about self-care, how art plays a part in self-care and mental wellness. Um, as we all know, studies and research um, lately have shown that art can help with depression and anxiety, actually lower blood pressure, and it shows a significant improvement with mental health. So um, I would like Sheldon just to kind of kick it off and discuss his art and how it has helped him with his self-care and mental <laughs> well-being and how art really plays a role in that. So ask questions and I'll monitor them too. Um. Yeah, I kind of uh, tell you, am I good with the audio? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I just kind of meant, to, as Telly mentioned in my bio, um, very uh, inspired by like the just kind of like signage and just pop co uh, American pop culture of like 1980s, 90s, and like the early 2000s. Um, although I wasn't around in the 80s <laughs> and uh, I was just a little kid in the 90s it's kind of hard to remember that era but uh you know I think I was fully aware around in the early 2000s so um but just um you know all the stories from like my mom and my dad um my whole family who did grow up in that time you know the, sh the stories were uh amazing and like just kind of uh, helped me imagine this whole other world that I never got to experience so um and then uh you know just growing up in in my family and my a lot of my families uh you know has these traditional values and practices and everything so just, you know I got to learn a lot of that and I was around a lot of our uh tradition and our ceremonies and everything and and the uh, designs and artwork that that we use in those in those spaces, those ceremonies and stuff, um, you know, they kind of really stick around a lot. Um, we use a lot of geometric patterns and designs for a very long time. Um, that's kind of where all my artwork comes from, and just being very uh i think my color palette is more important than the actual design although they're both very important but um i really focused on the color color theory color palette and um just really got into that um so yeah it's very vibrant as a lot of people say so and i appreciate that um so when when you were growing up, when did you kind of first come into um like oh wow, art? I want to pursue this at, at, in the professional <laughs> arena. You know, it's something I want to um, elevate and go to school for. So, um, so my dad is actually an artist since he was in college, and uh, so I just kind of always around it in general. Um, remember when I was you know elementary school middle school I wasn't too into it but I would sketch a lot just, just drawing sketching um and then high school came around same thing I was like didn't really know if that was going to be my thing yet but uh you know still drawing sketching and uh through high school um, I went to Red Cloud High School and you know I'd take all the art classes that I could and I would do like the LNI art show every year that I was in high school. Um, and then after high school, you know, it's still draw and sketch 2017 or so, the Red Cloud art show. Um, and then ever since then, it just kind of 
built built up and uh, back in 2018 i went to olc and just asked what their art programs are or if they had one and they did and they had recently switched it to a graphic design degree and i was okay with that i just wanted to do art classes and uh just continue on with that um so that's how i did get my graphic design degree and i heard really uh, with a graphic design degree we also still took drawing classes and painting classes and uh, color theory and stuff like that um, with really amazing teachers awesome teachers um, who i know two of them are still there and literally i still talk to them so, so uh, if you're deciding to go to olc they have a great uh arts program and then for our audience not everybody probably knows who your father is if you want to give a shout out to your dad, who's also an excellent artist in his own medium as well, too. Yeah, uh, so my dad is uh, James Star Comes Out. Um, he's been in the art world for a long time now. Um, he's getting out there still, he's still doing exhibits and shows. And, and he does a lot of, uh, I don't know what to call that uh, medium, but a lot of beading co work and traditional um, yeah a lot of traditional arts yeah. he does awesome horse masks i mean I, I just i think i had one of his horse masks on my story um commemorating the dakota 38 plus two that he did in 2012 yeah yeah, yeah. With floral design so what was of... his influence on your art did he have any or yeah was like, it a lot yeah like i said it was a uh, uh my family's very uh, traditional and had, you know, was around a lot of that stuff. And, you know, his art is just kind of like an extension of like the traditional designs and stuff. And I would see that all the time. So it was just kind of like my own version of these geometric patterns and designs and color palettes and stuff. And uh, so that was kind of always there. So let's kind of dive into, um, you know, as we all know, growing up in, in indigenous communities, um, you know, the mental health and mental wellness. Sometimes I know when I was a kid, I don't, you know, we're from different generations. It, it wasn't really talked about. It wasn't talked about when you were struggling and, and what you can do as an outlet that can help you with those inner turmoils and and how to express them because some some of a lot of people some people aren't really good communicators and art is you know kind of a language of self-expression in its own way whatever medium that you you are creative in whether it you know spoken word is an expression painting you know we're artists so we know those different mediums so let's kind of dive into that and when art you realized art really started playing a role in in helping you with your mental wellness and and kind of maintaining that I know in our culture you know my grandmother always used to say to keep your hands busy and it will kind of get you through those things which I know with other artists and maybe yourself included keeping them busy or um when you're when you're focused on the art that's in front of you whatever medium that may be that kind of gets your mind off whatever is troubling you and and you dive into that self-expression so kind of um talk a little bit about how art played a role in that for you yeah um so just I remember being like a kid and again I didn't uh, really realize this until later on but um I remember being at like wakes and funerals a lot and uh you know you, you don't realize how how that affects you as a kid you just yeah, you just don't understand everything um and then just you know uh just childhood in general uh being from the reservation was not the easiest and um we all had our own struggles i'm sure <laughs> and uh so after actually after high school um I started doing stand-up comedy, um, which 
you could say is an art form, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I guess so. It is. Uh, so that was like back in 2010. Uh, I was just doing that like a lot. Um, and that was kind of like my main thing. I was doing stand up comedy. And then, uh, like I mentioned, I didn't start doing my, the fine art stuff until around 2016, 17. Um, and uh, the stand-up comedy through that time just kind of like is what just kept me going, basically. Um, some of it good, some of it bad. It was good because you just have an outlet. Like, you're just... And, you know, these thoughts are real thoughts, but then you just make them funny and entertaining. Um, some of it's bad in my experience because I didn't realize till later, but it's kind of like covering up everything as well. Um, so I guess there's finding that balance right there too. And then when I got into like uh, fine art, painting, drawing, the graphic stuff, graphic design stuff, um, like the uh my inspirations like the uh stories and tv shows movies whatever of the 80s 90s and 2000s it was just kind of like um it's kind of like daydreaming all the time of of that time because you know all the stories that i've heard were all really good stories and um everybody's having a great time and um it's just kind of like where I went when I was daydreaming and making art and using these colors and uh, being inspired from those those stories and the images and everything. Um, yeah, it's really like a daydream, just kind of helping me <laughs> get through. And, and uh, me, I love all music from that, from that, that era, 80s and 90s. <laughs> it's all great music. Uh, um yeah it was just kind of really helping me get through so i see some of your art pieces back there do you want to show some with the audience oh. kind of, or yes. are they wrapped up so actually this one is like unfinished right now but this is a, a painting um it's bigger um i can uh share my screen for a lot of the digital stuff we can do that for a little bit yeah, let's show the audience because some may not know. And then after we show, um, so I want to kind of, after this segment, focus on the piece that you did to kind of bring attention to, to mental health, um, if you have it there with you too. So yeah, let's see some of your stuff. Okay, um, yeah, let's just pull it up here. By the way, we have a participant that said that um, your comedy show is so funny. So they appreciated your, oh. <laughs> and you are. Yeah, I, I saw it when you were at the um, Indian Arts um, event at, at the yeah. Dog. You were, you were funny. I appreciate that, whoever said that. <laughs> um, it was um, just... Patricia Withorn. She said, your comedy show was so funny. <laughs> So and, and so, I don't think a lot of people know, like, you're kind of a quiet guy, so you look real serious. So when it's kind of um, unexpected when you get up there and do your comedy show. So, yeah, yeah. it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, I kind of get that a lot of his um, little, you know, uh, know what word. <laughs> yeah. Um, shocked that I <laughs> do stand-up comedy and kids. Um, sorry, I'm just um, pulling up some of the latest um, graphic stuff that I've been doing. Um, so I'll uh, show the, the painting that I did first. So it's not the best for the screen, but um, this is just kind of like a picture of the painting. Uh, 
actually this painting is hanging in a dull art center right now um and it's a 30 by 48 so it's pretty big painting um you can't really tell with this picture it's, it's not the greatest picture of it and also i use only black in this painting so it makes it even harder for a camera to capture the all the brush strokes and, and everything um but this painting uh, um, Oh, you kind of froze up there. I don't know if it's just I'm my screen. To... You might want to repeat yourself uh, on that one, um, Sheldon, because it froze up a little bit. Please. Sorry. Okay. Back in... October 20, um, it just kind of I think Sheldon has fallen off if every all the participants want to um, just hang on a sec here. He fell off the grid. Let me see. <laughs> oh, you're back on. Okay. Just tell everybody you yeah. fell off. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay I, yeah, I've seen that piece in person, and I that was probably one of my favorites from your show. But I'm a poor struggling artist too, so I couldn't buy it. But someday, <laughs> it's a yeah. This picture doesn't do it justice, but it is a really nice piece. Like all the different, um, like you have your matte black and your glosses and stuff. And yeah, it's yeah. if you ever got it, if any of you ever get a chance, go see it in person it's a pretty nice piece well i like all your work i'm a big fan but this is a good piece yeah. so if you want to kind of back up you start cutting yeah. out when you start telling us the process of this piece yeah okay so again uh back in october 2021 20, uh diagnosed with ptsd i was going through a lot of stuff then and then um in december 21 so about a year ago um it had gotten pretty bad and i fell into what's called uh depersonalization and derealization um it's very terrifying <laughs> um i didn't i didn't leave my home for like three four months never went outside i you know, luckily I had people surrounding me uh, through that time. I, I couldn't even be alone for like 10 minutes or I'd have a panic attack. It was a really bad time. And uh, if anybody has any questions about that, I can answer that stuff as well because it is a, a common thing. And a lot of time when it happens to people, they don't, they don't have a name for it. They don't know what's happening to them. So it's even more scary. Um, if anybody has questions about that, I'm glad to answer that stuff too. Um, but that, um, uh, that time led me to, uh, I, I was trying to do anything and everything I could to make myself feel normal again. Uh, so I, I started this painting and, um, I said it was all one color, um, with different mediums in it like gloss and satin stuff like that um and just the the design of it was just kind of like the two two worlds i don't know that you're living in <laughs> when you're experiencing this these things one where you feel like you're going insane and and, that, that, and the world's not real and so many symptoms that you experience and uh and the other side are just trying to trying to make it through I mean, <laughs> a lot of uh emotions and ideas went into this painting it's very uh um very intricate for me and um 
again, I know we don't have a lot of time, but uh, if anybody has more questions about this painting, I'm glad to answer them as well. Um, I do have a short artist or artwork description written up about it. Um, but again, if you want to know more, you know, I'll gladly answer these questions. Um, but I'll show you some of the graphic design stuff we've been doing. Yeah, sounds uh, good. So on that particular painting that um, you did, you know, um, Colby saw it in, who's a participant in this presentation, she saw it in person. Her comment was it's an amazing piece when you see it in person. Um, Trisha Withhorn said beautiful artwork and she can see, you know, your description of, you know, I think we can all kind of see that in, in that one piece of painting. And when you see it live, for me, live in person, it does like, you know, it is, we, I can, as a person viewing your artwork from the outside in, you know, I can see that and, and it's nice, you know, it, we need to talk about these things and, and the art that those turbulent, situations that we go through can be expressed in this way because like I said before not all of us have the words you know and and you can yeah. express, you know and it, it's just a beautiful piece so yeah. yeah actually I'm glad glad you actually had mentioned that because in the description that I had um what the things that I was experiencing it's so hard to explain to somebody like almost like as there is no words to explain what's happening to you and uh that's kind of also what came out <laughs> in this painting too it's just I didn't have any words to explain it and this is just kind of what it was um yeah just a, a lot <laughs> going on here and thank you for sharing that because that that is a really nice piece all right let's see there I'm, I'm a big fan of all your stuff i wish i could buy it all let's see what you got <laughs> Okay, um, and then we're just kind of like one of the latest ones. Like I said, it's just kind of going into uh, um, like really inspired by. Um, so I don't know if anybody seen or does, does remembers these like postcards from like seventies, eighties, nineties of uh, just cities and stuff, and if they would have this script style writing on these postcards and um so i just kind of came up with my own mark making um and just uh yeah i mean it's kind of hard to explain these things because um when i'm designing them and creating them it's um really uh like design based rather than subject matter um, you know, I wanted this this uh, mark making that I have to be kind of like the centerpiece uh, of these uh, of these designs, and um, these are kind of what come out. Some of them do have meaning, some of them don't. Um, this one doesn't exactly have <laughs> too much of a meaning behind it, uh, but it's just kind of I chose to show this one just because it kind of shows off like almost everything that I do and like my color palette and everything yeah so. your line definitely see the 80s um I'm an 80s kid so I love I love the the 80s influence on there I just have one request as a curly haired native if you ever do <laughs> any of these if in the future add some waves in there yeah <laughs> I'm just messing around <laughs> kind of <laughs> yeah but yeah I, I really I think maybe so kind of explain as a graphic artist too you're you're using a lot of the lines and a lot of math well I think any artist knows there is a lot of math and symmetry that do go into whether it be beading or graphic arts or painting you know there is a lot of um, math involved in that too and and like when you sit down and do think of color theory but um those are just technical th terms that we use, but I think, it, and you can probably add to this too, that any time, I think everybody is creative. And if as long as you keep your hands busy and you're going through a difficult time, pick up a pen or a pencil or, you know, like you with your graphic art, that's more of the new medium now, you know, everybody 
has access to that um, technology, I guess, depending on, on what your, your com comfort, comfortability or however, you know, yeah. just express yourself if you can't say it, you know? Yeah. Um, you wanted me to speak on um, like the lines and stuff, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like, do, do, do you have to map it out first on like, let's say a piece of paper or when you're doing graphic art, do you, your your um, program already have that in there? No, like the program will create the lines for you. Um, but like, if you could see my mouse pointer, um, this uh, mark making stuff, um, this is on paper first, this uh, kind of script style mark. Um, I do it on paper with uh, paint brushes or brush markers, whatever I have. And I'll, um, you know, I just have like sketchbooks full of these uh, these marks and I, I keep going with these marks until I find one that I want to use and I, I'll get one and I'll uh, scan it into a scanner into this program that I use and then uh, basically digitalize the mark making so uh, it's kind of quick uh, description of also the that's process. good so you're actually with your graphic arts using more than just one medium yeah yeah cool cool all right on to the next okay um and then um this one was kind of made around the same time as the black acrylic painting it's kind of when i was going through all everything that i was going through um and this the background is actually a, a picture i had taken um uh and um, I'll get <laughs> I'll get into some real details um, about this. So I, this one's titled uh, "Tears in My Eyes," and uh, I had taken this picture, and uh, one of the symptoms I had had experienced during that time was um, um, I, my depth perception was really off, and I couldn't. Um, I don't know things everything that was that I could see regularly I was seeing very blurry at the time and I couldn't tell how far away or close things were for a while um, and everything my eyesight just had this like amber it's amber light over everything um, and I even went to like the eye doctors and something wrong with my eyes um, but yeah like this these anxiety and stress and everything to really physically affect you too um and i uh, also had these uh i don't know some people call them floaters i guess <laughs> but in your eyes they'll sh I'll get these like little shapes and stuff in your eye in my eye my eyesight and the vision and um this mark making is just kind of like what i can make of it because you don't you're not actually seeing it but it's there <laughs> i don't it's really hard to explain um and i remember taking this picture and it was just like it was exactly kind of how i was seeing cell towers and stuff and uh and these these smart making was kind of what was like really in my vision at the time really strange and really odd um and again uh, that and that was on paper first with a brush marker, I believe, and uh, you know, scanned it. Did well, I'm gonna say it, like, it and uh, kind yeah. of designed. You made this. some the, just the two pieces that I see that you created while you were going through your difficult time, like there's still beauty in, in, in it, you know? And I think that kind of goes to show that that's what you can do with art. You still think you're in this darkest place, but there's still beauty in it. So yeah, that's, I like them. Okay. 
Yeah. Nice. Yeah, look, look, looking at this. Looking at this piece. Um, doing a little better now. Uh, uh, looking at this. Um, can we move on to the next one? Like, yeah, you were kind of cutting out a little bit there. I don't know if it's um, Kelly. Can you? Am I good on audio? Yeah, you are now. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so this one, uh, uh, um, if you've been to any of the markets, okay. Yeah, so um, did, so when I can kind of see the progression, um, when you're going through those really difficult times, was it easier for you to kind of, um, or more difficult, was it easier for you to be in that creative space or was it just a little more difficult because of, you know, some of the physical ailments that you had because of that too? Um, yeah, I would say it was um, a lot more difficult uh for a while there um a couple months um it's really hard to explain but I, I literally couldn't be by myself for longer than 10 minutes or i would kind of go into these like panic attacks and stuff it was very strange um and then just trying to you know, be, be in front of really difficult and even like, uh, you know, pay, pen and paper, you know, just, um, again, I'll go into a little bit about it, but um, I had a lot of really, really extreme uh, existential thoughts at the time even just holding something it was uh, doing this how, how do I even how am I here how do I even exist there's a lot of extreme uh, existential uh, thoughts and questions and uh, yeah it's it really strange just trying to do any type of art but but you still did it so yeah you know i think that just goes to show art as a tool to to keeping you present and and still trying to express yourself in some way so cool you got some yeah. more pieces to show us or yeah 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 um okay uh, can you see this one now Yes, we can see it. Oh, beautiful. That's what you had this in your show at um, the the Bruce Lean Emerging Artist Gallery too. Like, this, oh, this is nice. All yeah. right, tell us a little bit about. So yeah, I've been to any of the the artist markets here that I've been to. Um, this is probably the most popular one. I've sold um, most copies of, of this one. And uh, all the models that I use are anonymous and they want to stay anonymous. So, um, well, I'll model for all us curly haired natives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I volunteer as tribute, Sheldon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then this sort of just kind of like, uh, again, just that like daydreaming, like. You know, just of yeah, these colors just remind me of, you know, 80s and 90s and my mom and dad's stories, my family stories, everything. And that, um, I'm personally trying to get better at painting and drawing uh, humans in general because <laughs> I was very, as like one of my weaker points in the art world is. Um, drawing, painting humans in general. 
Um, and again, there's my mark making in the back. Um, uh, piece didn't have um too much um behind it, but it was again kind of like getting me out of uh it was really hard times just being in that daydream you know better better times better well as we perceive it <laughs> it's better <laughs> um yeah this and just a color palette on this one it i just wanted to go as as bright and, and saturated as possible I love um, the the '80s vibe too. Like and your color palette, like when I think the progression of your artwork as we see it too, like the colors play a role too. Like when you see vibrant colors like this too, it just like automatically is is this jolt, you know? Like oh wow, that's that's nice, you know? Yeah, makes you feel happy. But um, yeah, it's cool, nice. I have a. Jenny Reed, one of the participants, said she has a print, and it's one of her favorites. Maybe kind of talk. Um, well, when when we're closing up the presentation, you can kind of put some of your prices out there about your prints and how they can get a hold of you and stuff. But oh, yeah, can you sure. show us a couple more. Yeah, I got. Uh, sure, guys, one more. Um, this kind of like. Can you see this one now? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can see it. Yeah, this is kind of like one of my first like major big pieces um and again the 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 vhs tape obviously my childhood um around that area all of our childhoods with vhs tapes and everything and uh, i took the picture of the vhs tape um with my camera but the 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 label i created the label um which with the computer and uh this one is obviously the uh, battle of 1876 and and you know, wounded knee and stuff and uh uh sorry um against like husher and seventh calvary and all that stuff and uh, when i was a kid all my f i really liked action movies 80s action 80s and 90s action movies like kind of like my favorite at the time and uh I just kind of took that and uh, use, you know, our history and kind of kind of like put them together. And that, uh, that's cool. That's I don't kinda... think, yeah, sorry to interrupt. I don't think a lot of people got it that the Battle of 1876 and the Battle of the Little Bighorn, and you have all the tribes yeah. represented right there. Like, right on. That's, I like that mix of, you know, like you said, you're going back to, our history that's behind it and then um and being innovative in in your artistic medium and showcasing it like that like that that's pretty yeah. cool good job love it yeah and um it's kind of like kind of how my whole idea started of like uh you know we do have our history and um you know we get you know a lot of people see us as these black and white photos of you know, ancestors and stuff but you know uh we also we're, we're all still here and we also have, <laughs> we had history all the way up until you know yesterday and, did you need uh, me to um lee 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 on that part no i'm <laughs> 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 just kidding <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah and then like you know at some point in the future this is gonna be you know my history as well so and uh, you know, we had to survive through, you know, like I said, uh, up until yesterday. <laughs> you know, that's still all history, and uh, it's still a part of us. And uh, this is just kind of like, you know, my the time that I look back on all the time. It's the when I was a kid. That's cool. We have a participant that said it's two histories combined into one now. So that's cool. Yeah. 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 VHS is obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, so it's seven forty-eight. We have a few more minutes here. Um, do you have some more to show us, or? Um, yeah, pull up one more. Um, 
Like I said, um, I've, I've been a fan ever since I first saw your work um, at the very first Native Art Market, you know, so you'll have to let us, um, oh, that's nice. Um, okay, so uh, this is kind of like my latest uh, thing. So this is, um, these are prints right now, uh, but the ledger paper is real. It's a 1914 ledger paper out of a 1914 ledger paper book um, and the um, the rest of it is acrylic painting um, it's acrylic paint um, but I do have the originals still um, I still haven't framed yet uh, and again this is kind of like bringing those like the other person mentioned like the two histories together you know like ledger ledger art is in our uh, contemporary history back in, you know, started in 1800s. Um, we still do it today. A lot of great ledger artists out there right now. Yeah. Um, this is this is kind of like my, kind of like my take on it. Um, so this is still a work in progress or have you uh, finished? Oh, this one's done. I have- That's nice, Sheldon. five different paintings. Yeah, I, I have five different paintings in this style. Uh huh. Um, up, I could bring up a couple of the other ones. Um, um, there's like another one. It, can you see that? Yep, that's nice okay. too. Yeah, got your '80s vibe in there, but with your traditional <laughs> color palette there nice yeah so uh yeah i did a series of five of these five different ones and they're all from the same ledger book um the 1914 ledger book so i got these pages from um and then yeah i just kind of did my own uh my own style ledger art <laughs> on it and uh the models and the vehicles are all well, except for this one in the foreground. One in the background yeah, is an 80s, cool. 80s car. So. <laughs> Definitely would not see those in Oglala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, so do you know Stephen Paul Judd? That would be cool. Your guys' styles, like if you guys ever collaborated on, on anything. Uh, I don't think I met him. What do, Are you um, familiar with his work? maybe i don't gotta remember follow him on instagram sheldon yeah because he's from like like okay. the his styles like 70s kind of 80s and moderate yeah. like that would be cool for you guys to do a collab on maybe i can maybe oh, yeah, i can get sure. you two together on a collaboration that'd be awesome yeah yeah all right so we have about eight minutes here if anybody has any questions um for Sheldon here. Sheldon, you want to kind of put a plug in for your um, social media and how they, if they ever want to purchase anything from you? Um, so yeah, I uh, find me on Instagram for the art stuff. Uh, it's just search for Sheldon Star. Um, you see my little logo, it's just a star, <laughs> basically. Um, a lot of I update that a little more often. I do have a website. Go to sheldonstar.com. Um, that one has a lot of the larger prints on there. Um, and uh, the, the higher quality pictures are on the website. So if you want to see more detail and stuff, you can head to the website. Um, I am on Facebook, but I don't <clears throat> mainly use Facebook for uh, the stand up comedy stuff. So I kind of keep my Instagram and my Facebook kind of their own thing. Um, a lot of the art, uh, all my art stuff is on the Instagram. So you find me there. And uh, my website is for my artwork as well. Um, so Clementine would like to know where can we see the stand up comedy? I know you went to my reservation to Lot Star Casino. Um, oh, yeah. But um, the, I wasn't yeah. there next time. I will be <laughs> there and I will laugh at everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um stand-up comedy is kind of uh, a little 
not frequent in South and Midwest, basically. Um, it's kind of always these one-off shows here and there. There is one open mic in Rapid City in Murphy's Murphy's Bar, the basement. Uh, there's an open mic that I'm I'm that I I'm at every week. Um, it's on Thursdays at eight o'clock. So that's where's where is that one at Murphy's? Yeah, uh, downtown Rapid City. Okay, um, so we'll definitely. If you guys want something to do, go see. He is funny. I mean, he has one-liners, but it it's funny. It is. So I'm doing a promo for you too. You like I said, it's it's unexpected because I didn't, you're kind of this quiet, calm, cool, collected guy. And then and we hear your comedy to you, and then it's it, it, <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose laughter combined with, you know, that's like to me expressionism or you know, you're expressing yourself through comedy and it's kind of in our culture to deal with hard things with comedy too so it's a coping mechanism as um you know a part of art is and thank you so much Sheldon for sharing your story with us definitely if any of you want to reach out to Sheldon personally um he has his Instagram and um you know throw some questions on there if you want to talk or even if you want to you utilize him as a presenter to for art and how it helped him through his um his challenges and everything that he went through and you can kind of see the progression in your art too like you can tell from that specific time where things were difficult for you and then as things start getting better you can see the the metamorphosis in your art so yeah I, like i said yeah. i'm always a fan and I will be your model for curly haired natives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, again, anybody has any questions about mental health stuff, I, I'm not a f professional, but I realize how scary and terrifying it is. So, yeah. <laughs> do you have any I questions about that? Yeah. I don't, you know, to me, you aren't a professional, but you're a person who experienced it and you experienced uh, it to a point where it was debilitating and you not only had your struggles with your mental health, but those in turn caused physical struggles, you know, and I think for people to hear that and see a face that with that story and then to see your artwork and the progression of that story, I think brings it to life. So you, you are in a way an expert in that because you're the tool that we can model after we we see our youth struggling or we see some young adults struggling and then we can be like hey i know a person that went through this that can probably help you and here's the tools that he used you know and pick up a paintbrush or or a mic and do stand up comedy and things like that so you are a tool so i think your story is is a good one and it shows in your artwork so thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, does anybody, <laughs> my sister got on there and said, no, I'll be the curly haired model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I was just reading the, the comments uh, to Patricia. Um, yeah, Patrick Nagel is, is one of my favorite artists of all time. So <laughs> <laughs> She's clapping, there she is. On, yeah. yeah, cool, you know who she is talking about, but yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Sheldon, for sharing your story. Like I said, it's always a pleasure to work with you. Um, I, I like um, to see you more up and coming. You know, we got to push a plug, especially for you emerging artists. There's really maybe the Native community here in Rapid City or the region can kind of band together and, and try to create more spaces for emerging artists, you know, because you you have that tie with the stories and the cultural ceremonies and things like that that you grew up with but then you have these modern times and in your artwork the the blend of that awesome kudos Lee, 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 Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh yeah thanks for everybody who joined and listened appreciate it um yeah yeah, and definitely again. um they put in the chat box here of um your website and where they can go and see you on Instagram. I don't get on Facebook that much. So that's just mainly for your comedy, right? For people to get um, 
Oh no, the yeah, the Facebook. It's kind of, it's kind of the where I keep uh, yeah. contact with all the other comedians and stuff. Um, so for the art, yeah, I go to the Instagram or the website. Yeah, and I'm definitely gonna put a be a plug for you too. That you know, you, I think you'd be an excellent role model for our youth, and and to hear your story and how your artwork really helped get you out of that and and keep you going. You know that you just didn't give up. So kudos on that. And like I said, Sheldon, I'm one of your biggest fans. <laughs> Thank I you. love Thank your you. artwork. Maybe we can do a trade. I'll, I'll beat some stuff up and yeah, we'll for sure. Trade. You can really deck your Wea out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> all right, everybody have a good night. Thank you all for um, joining in and hear, hearing Sheldon's story and definitely go check his artwork out. Definitely head down to Murphy's Pub open mic night when he's down there. He is a funny guy. He don't look like it, but he is a funny guy. <laughs> all right. Thanks again, Sheldon. Have a good yeah, one. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all for coming.